be back with another episode. First ever guest, Nolan Bruzahoff. Got the mask on. La Cheeks left. La Choke. He didn't show up for game four. It was LeBron. It was LeBucket. All that. But it was starting to look like it was going to be LeBun, LeBuns for the first half. But then he let him get going, let him get downhill. He started frying. He he's LeBron on. James did. He does what he does in the playoffs. Don't get me wrong. I get it. The finals record, blah, blah, blah. LeBron's not clutch this. LeBron's not clutch that. He's washed. He needs AD. But look what happened. He, does he did it AD. again. LeBron I mean, James, a kid from Akron, Ohio, did it again. I mean, he's only up 3-1. It ain't, it ain't all the way stop, over yet. Stop. All right, this is all I'm going to say. You guys might not know me, all right? But I said Lakers in five for every single series, and look what happened. It's not going to be Lakers in five. He's got the next It's going to be Lakers in five next game. Watch. Over. Uh, L.A. Rap, Los Lakers. Let's get it. I mean, they, they snuck by with a win. My, my thing with the Heat this whole time has been they just put all good players out there. But that's just not the case no more with Drogic Gr- out. None? Oh my gosh, is he a cost fest. Yo, you talking about an NBA guy on the biggest stage getting thrown out there and they want him to produce. He's not producing, he's just forcing. He's forcing shots up and it's not getting the job done. He's forcing them and then Kelly on defense is jumping for joy on every single every single hold, pump. Hold on, hold They're on. We, giving him the nickels, all that. We gotta go back really quick. I remember seeing a play in the late third quarter. Maybe set late second. Nunn goes baseline on AD with AD on his back hip. Attempts a reverse layup off the glass. What did he do? No, he beat those. Give me that. All of that. I want all of it. He said, give me that, man. Stop playing. AD? It's intimidation. You saw it tonight. The, early in the game, Hero had a fast break dunk layup. He was looking behind him, looking behind him, slowed up, tried some trash layup. Brick. AD behind him. This is all I'm going to say. If you're going against, or I shouldn't even say going against, if LeBron or AD is trailing you, if you don't turn around and back it out, you better try and dunk that basketball so you get a foul. Yeah. All this fancy stuff is getting glassed, it's getting punched, and it's getting thrown. Nothing else. Yeah, they're taking it to the trailer park most definitely. The role players for the Lakers stepped up, though. They were... Second half, it was he, they were they were just focused on stopping Braun. Fourth quarter especially, they were sagging off the guys in the corns, and Kuzma hit a couple. KCP got his bucks. KCP was frying. House was, arrest KCP was frying. Okay, but as a Lakers fan, you know all year it's been KCP's trash. Get rid of KCP. <laughs> Lakers fans always have someone to blame. Listen, then, it's, listen. then it's Danny Green. Then everyone hates listen. Kuzma. Okay, okay, okay. They are just not a loving fan base. They're not accepted listen. and welcoming of their players. It is what it is, all right? L.A. fans are just like New York fans. We demand a lot. And if you can't bring it to the table, we're cutthroat. New York fans don't demand anything. Oh, my gosh. They mix their cheeks every what? year and they no, no, still support. No, no, we're support. talking about all the sports. All the sports. New, New York s- fans are ruthless. I'd say nah, goes, that's Philly fans. No, I'd say it goes Boston, New York, L.A. New For York sure, with lives with players. Cheeks franchises. Jets, Mets, Knicks. But they still rip them apart. Giants are average. Okay, they rip them apart. Just but... because they don't win, but they still rip them apart. That's what I'm trying to get at. Like, the fan base is still right. ruthless. Then Philly fall behind L.A. For sure. L.A.'s uh, top three, I, without a doubt. I never thought it was like that, but when you go on social media, all you see is... I think I feel like it's more LeBron fans. I don't know. Maybe it's Lakers fans. Maybe or maybe it's just LeBron guys. They want LeBron. Guys that just want LeBron to succeed and get mad at when anyone else has a bad game. Listen, here's the, here's the thing. This is how I'm gonna put it. I'm obviously a huge Laker guy. All right, born and raised Wait. in Southern California. This and that. that but I'm also this. a big LeBron guy. Now, oh. if LeBron were to choke this series away with a team he has now. I would never be able to say, you know what, LeBron James is my GOAT. I wouldn't be able to. Now, hold on. I know you were about to say. There's so many people out there that will already say Jordan this, someone else that, LeBron, you know, blah, 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 finals record. I don't want to hear it. But if he, if he were to lose this series against this Heat team, who's not mediocre, they're very good, but they're not like a, a traditional finals team, I would say. Yeah, without Drogic especially. Yeah. That I I, will, I couldn't defend him anymore. I, no I would defense. not be able to defend him. 
Especially like I said, Lakers tomorrow. in five. Seal the deal tomorrow. Uh, two days from now. No, they don't have that. They don't have that cut through them. They they're they're gonna relax again. They can turn it on when they want to turn it on. They did it tonight. They turn they turn it on once they saw that they they could be evened up. But when they were up two zero and they had a chance to put it away with Bam and Drogic out, they ain't do it. So I'm thinking, Heat fighting to stay alive. AD is gonna chill again, relax a little bit. The game plan that they had in the fourth quarter to slow down Braun. I hadn't really seen them play defense like that on Braun exactly, where they're just playing man to man and sagging off everybody else. I think they continue that. They'll get games five, and then game six, it'll probably be clips. Yeah, nah, it's it's over. Next, it's over. Yeah, it's over. They're gonna show up and just put a game face on, sunglasses, headphones. It's I mean, game over. It's game over. Yeah, it's over. Ron knows, like, uh, he he's done a lot. He's done almost everything. But he can't lose this. He can't. All right, if he wins, where is he all time? See, but you can't ask me that. I'm a LeBron guy. So I'm going to say he's already my favorite all time. Therefore, right. I'm going to put him above everyone okay. all time. Okay. Hold on, I'm a big Kobe guy, but like we're talking about Braun and Jordan, correct? No, I said where's Braun all the time, so you could put whoever you'd like in there. Sounds like you're disrespecting Kobe a little bit, putting Braun oh, ahead of him. Oh, so. no disrespect to Kobe ever. But all right, who is who's better all time, Kobe or Braun? As a just a straight up basketball player, I'm gonna have to say LeBron James. Okay. I'm going to have to. He does everything. I would agree with that one. Now, whose mentality do I want? Day in, day out? Practice or not practice? Kobe. Who do I love more as a person? Rest in peace, Kobe. Kobe. But who do I want to start a franchise with? LeBron James. I don't think it's a... Yeah. It's a question. Like, who Uh would not pick LeBron? Well... If you if you take the whole package, I'm going Kobe just based off the fact that Braun's gonna leave you once once you go once you you lose some players, he's leaving and he's going he's bouncing somewhere else. Kobe will stay with you the whole twenty years. At least he did that with the Lakers. So I'd rather have twenty years of Kobe than five years of Braun. All right, now that's fair. That's fair. I shouldn't go against my guy Kobe like that. Yeah, but I'm just saying, as like a hooper. Yeah, I don't know what you're saying. If it's just drafting the talent, yeah. you gotta go Braun. You gotta go. Braun. You gotta go, go Braun. Braun. I mean. Now he's taking Jordan or Braun. Jordan, of course. You don't think it's any close? You wouldn't even think about LeBron. Uh, after the series, I still wouldn't really think about LeBron, but it's like it's it gets fairly close. He's he he'll he's gonna he still has years left to keep building the resume. It's not there yet, but like he he could definitely reasonably come with it come to Jordan level in his career if he wins this one. It won't be too far. It would be like one more impress one more impressive ring, I think. Or if if he gets to six or if he gets like one more really impressive. But the thing is with LeBron, I have to value most of his rings slightly less because with the Heat, they should have had more than two with that with that roster. They should have won against the Mavericks. LeBron I mean MJ never had a moment like that where he just folded against the Mavericks. That was a series without him. They would have had a chance. And they could have won one. Well, the Spurs won. They were done by then. But he, that, there's one that he def, definitely should have had. And there's a couple others, maybe with the Cavs coming back, that he could have had. So, And the teams that he won it with, the only, the only one where it was like he was the underdog and it was an upset was when he came back against the Warriors. That was his one real impressive ring. Are the ones he builds super teams. And Hold on, stop, the, stop, 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 more impressive stop, stop. roster. That's not an impressive ring. That was an almost impossible ring. He came back from the brinks of death well, I mean, and he, won that. That wasn't even impressive. That's not even, that he, devalues I mean, he, the whole. I don't see how that's more impressive because he got himself down 3-1 and then players for the Warriors got injured and then he came stop back. Stop it. No, I don't happens. hear the injury and the suspension and the. This and I mean, that. It, I'm saying it's impressive, but the comeback doesn't really make it more impressive for his resume because Ooh. it would have been more impressive if he could have just beaten them in six or seven Bro, or without team? coming back. Kyrie, Kevin Love, okay. 
Kevin J.R. Love. Smith played well. Jamon Shumper was in shots. But we're talking Tristan about Thompson. some. We're talking about. Okay, hold on. The team that the Warriors had KD. Now I know that's not the same year. Mm-hmm. Just wait. In my eyes. Uh-huh. Now you probably you know you probably go through deeper with like you know old teams this and that you know what I mean, but like in my eyes that was the greatest team ever assembled. Yeah, most talented. Okay, most talented by far. Not even uh, question. Well, not ever because when well, back when there was like eight teams in the league, the Celtics had like half the good players with like Bob. Okay, Cruz and I, I don't I don't but, yeah, count that. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. The fact that LeBron James. So okay, now Katie's not there. Mm-hmm. Even with that team, I consider them one of the best. I mean, they're the best regular season record ever. Good. They're Are, top, top like ten. four team. I mean, not winning the ring. I don't. As a Warriors fan, I don't even think I'd put them top four because you got to put the KD Warriors. You got to put Magic, Kareem, Lakers. You got to okay. put um, Jordan ninety six, ninety seven. Jordan. Okay. Uh, and then the Celtics with Bird, McHale, Parrish, and them. There's four. Okay, so five. Possibly. Okay. Definitely top. That's 10. what I'm trying to say. All right. That was a very impressive win. In my yeah, eyes for I said it was impressive, back. but the comeback didn't make it impressive to me because the so the Warriors had to throw out Azili in the starting lineup game seven because Bogey went down. Bogey was a huge player for them. Uh, <laughs> that's this. Yeah, Draymond, Draymond was suspended for hey, that's a his fault. game. That is his fault. I'll give you that, but the Warriors, Iguodala was hurt. For one game, he came back for game seven, but he was still lumbering. Got that. They got the win. The he win was the win. Got, he got it pinned. If you want to go back pinned. to him. Yeah, I mean, he would, have, he would have dunked it if he wasn't hurt. Ah, he would have, stop it. He would have dunked stop it if he, it. he had Bron a bad back. would have threw that. He would have thrown that fifth row. I don't want to hear it. Iguodala would have dunked it. Nothing. How tall is Iguodala? Probably a good six, seven, six, eight. Injury six, or six. not, he's dunking that with ease. Injury or not. Well, I mean, he didn't dunk it. He couldn't. He was scared of Bron. I mean, if he was, he scared, heard the footsteps. He if you hear the footsteps, you should try and dunk it even more. Hold on, if I recall correctly, he went up for the lay, pump fake so someone like in midair, someone jumped by, and then Bron jumped by, and then Bron. So he wasn't gonna dunk that because Jr. was there. All right, that's it for the for the guest on the pod, Nolan Bruzhoff. Check out his brand, the Between Clouds, his shirt I'm wearing. Check Let them know where to find it. Check it out on Instagram at Between Clouds Clothing, uh, at Between Clouds uh, Dropping something tomorrow. Eh, I'll drop something Friday. New yes. shirt coming. Stay tuned. Check it out on Instagram. Upcoming brand. Get in on it early. You out. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right, yo. That was good, pod. All right, well, now I'm just going to give y'all the little more in depth breakdown. Since we kind of just blabbed about random stuff there. Man, like I said, the Heat, Kendrick Nunn and Kelly Olenek, they just brought a cost fest. Kelly Olenek is good good offensively, and generally he's he's better than what they had defensively in terms of just being a, being a big body out there. But they took their, big, their second big body off the court. They didn't play Dwight at all, and it was just Marcus Morris and the small guys around Anthony Davis and Anthony... When Anthony Davis was out, they had no big out there. So there's really not much need for Kelly Olenek now. I was advocating for him before, like game one, when he didn't play at all. But now, throw him out there for a little bit, see if you can get a spark when when you feel like you need an offensive spark. But not as much as they had him out there because he's going to cost you defensively. And then none on offense. Oh, my gosh. Understand why you would throw him out there. No Drogic. He's your he's your replacement. He's your fill in point guard, lefty, shifty, all that. He started for you in the regular season. I would understand why he'd be a trustable guy to have out there play big minutes. But this whole playoffs, when he's gotten his chances, he's been horrible. And he was bad tonight. He came out, took two bad middies. I don't know why they kept playing him so much minutes. He he plays decent defense, especially for someone his size, small. Like he holds his own very well, but. He's not a lockdown by any means. He's too small to be a lockdown. And offensively, he just takes bad shots. And he's and he doesn't make very many. He doesn't very make very many even when he gets decent looks. He had a couple threes, but that's about it. I would stop playing him play him maybe a few minutes like Kelly Olenek. Throw him out there for a few minutes. I still think you should play Kelly probably like 10. 
depending on like when the game, how the game's going, when you need an offensive buckets. But generally, when you throw big, I would I want to see more Myers Leonard as the second big. But Bam needs Bam. It's a neck. I feel like once it's your neck, it's really you're really not aggravating your neck throughout the game. If it's good, it's good. You can just keep playing him big big minutes. Aside from that, Iguodala needs to play more. I have to keep saying it. Yeah, I, I don't. I understand why he wouldn't, because I saw him out there tonight, and he doesn't want to shoot. He doesn't want to score. He has t- opportunities around the rim, and he just keeps passing them up. He doesn't want to go up. Like I, I believe in him. I believe in him going up against people. He's an athletic guy still. He's old, but he can he still get up a little bit. He's still strong. He can still fight through contact. He can still finish. I trust him more than a lot of a lot of guys in the shots they're taking. A lot of the shots Hero is taking, he t- he makes some crazy ones, but some of the times he passes up, and Hero has to take a horrible look. Or, or anyone just having off-balance jumpers rather than Iguodala just finishing a layup. From the Lakers' side, just completely went away from Dwight after the beginning. Can't blame him. Dwight, Dwight hasn't been doing too much in the minutes he's been the last couple games, and Marcus Morris has been hooping. And the way that he had been playing them, played them tonight was man-to-man and just sag off the other guys that aren't Braun and Davis. And Dwight's a non-shooter, so they just want to space the floor and just let those guys get open corner threes. And it worked. Danny Green hit a couple. Kuzma hit a couple. KCP hit a couple. He had a couple drives. The guys were playing well off of off of the heavy help off off the heavy help towards LeBron and AD. Vogel has done a great job. When he got hired, everyone was talking about oh he's just filling in until they let Jason Kidd be the head coach. Never understood that. Vogel has a good resume. He didn't win with the Magic because who wins with the Magic? But he took the Pacers to the conference finals multiple times. He's a good coach. And he's done a good job this year. I don't know why they would hire him just to hold the hold it down for a little bit for Jason Kidd to be head coach. Jason Kidd was never a good head coach. I'm a Bucks fan. He was trash head coach. And Vogel's done a good job this year. Great job. A lot of people want to hate on him, don't give him credit, but the the rotations he's thrown out there, he's done a great job. I didn't believe in Mark Markeith Morris, but He's been hitting the shots. He's been able to just play his role, catch and shoot off Braun when they double off him and knock it down and be a big enough body to hold his own against bigger defenders and he's versatile to be able to switch into smaller guys. Put him on Jimmy for a little bit and he did a good job holding that down. Had a good job getting role players involved and switching lineup going smaller. And now since they're going smaller, less Kelly for the Heat. Then you could throw more small ball lineups with Iggy at the five. When when Bam's da- when Bam's down, y'all can go back to not playing another big if there's not going to be Dwight out there. And if you're pre- playing this, playing where they double instead of a zone, if there's no zone, you can do this. But they went back to a little zone at the in the fourth quarter, or if it wasn't zone, it was this, the heavy help man defense. Like I said before, it's either a matchup zone or heavy help man. So. It's sometimes hard to tell, but um, but they went to zone for a little bit. I know that I saw that, and they were forcing Braun to take deep threes, and it was great, and he was missing them. But then they just couldn't grab the rebound. Bam just couldn't. It was going out past Bam, and there was just no one getting, going in to grab the rebound. Jimmy's got to get in there. Jimmy played a good game, but they're gonna need great out of him. Now that they're down three one, I think it's over. I think they'll get one more because I like this Heat team a lot. But no, Gor- no Goran killed him. No Bam for that one game or one and a half games. Two games? Whatever, two and a half games. Yeah, Bam for that two and a half games. Killed him. And now they're going to they're gonna need to have Jimmy just completely go off. And I don't see... Even if he does, there's LeBron and Anthony Davis on the other side. So I think he can do that for one more game. Bam could give him a great game. So at most, it could possibly go to seven if Bam gives him a great game and Jimmy goes off one game. At the end of the day, it's not going to be three in a row for the Heat. I don't see it having three times where Jimmy and Bam outplay AD and LeBron. And then the role players for the Heat aren't even much of an advantage anymore. If, I don't even think they're an advantage at all anymore. Now that there's no Goran and Kendrick Nunn has to step up and now they play Kelly bigger minutes. The role players are just 
not as big of an advantage. You know, we're talking about LeBron's resume and stuff. Ring's a ring. Ring's going to help him. Ring's got to move him up a little bit. But when it comes to rings, this isn't going to be one of the more impressive. Still counts, though. Goes from three rings to four rings. It's going to be big for him. I want to say one more thing about officiating. During the game, there was one point where Caruso got the technical. And Van Gundy said something about they, the refs choose who they want to give a T to. Because people complain like that all the time. And people claim, complain more than that. It was just a regular complaint. You know, I'm I don't have a problem with teeing them up guys for that are complaining because it gets old watching that and you don't want to see that every time. But he's right that they just choose random times to do it and that some players will get teed up for that and some won't. And it's getting it's getting pretty annoying for me as a fan because you don't see it as much as like in the NFL where they it's pretty much just officiated star teams, star players. It's pretty much the same. They get most of the same calls. It's not like one player just gets to do anything and then other players don't. In the NBA, it's really star-driven. And this is where you get to people saying stuff's rigged, this and that, because it really is a thing where star players could be officiated completely differently than any other player. It's just a whole other set of rules. And this isn't a LeBron hate thing. Players, I like, I like Luka. And I don't hate, hate LeBron when I see it. When I've said LeChoke and stuff, that's jokes. I'm not a fan of LeBron. Well, y'all getting mad in the comments and stuff, it's jokes. I don't hate LeBron. I mean, this isn't even an against the LeBron thing, though. Because I like Luka and stuff like that. But they just let him complain all game long. And they don't do anything. And if a role player says something, they might team up. And that happened tonight for Caruso. And I don't think it was even because of what Caruso said or what he did. I think it's because LeBron was complaining all night long. Every call, screaming, making a big scene, making sure... The cameras are watching, making sure everyone sees that he's upset. And he's showing up the refs, but they know that they're not. They don't want to team up because that's going to draw all types of attention towards them. And if they're wrong, everyone's going to be on them. If they just let it go, it's a safe thing to do. And so they just let star players go. And I think that's why they teed up Caruso. They were just, all right, we've had enough of LeBron. We don't want to team up, so we're going to whack Caruso. Gets a little annoying as a fan. Can't get mad at it, like as. If, I, if you're a Heat fan or anything like that, because you know that's just how it is with star players all the time, especially next level like LeBron. But it gets a little annoying. Not really an unfair thing because it's consistent. Just something. I wish they could just offici officiate the game regular, the same way for all players. Like they do for the most part in the NCAA. Even top teams, I feel like they get officiated the same as everyone else. That It's not at least not as clear where... You could clearly see that LeBron can do whatever he wants and other players will get teed up and get called for way less. But now I think that's all I got for the game. Stay tuned. We'll react to game five next. Boosh.